Hare Krishna, welcome to the Bhagavad Gita class. We will complete the 12th chapter today. So, let us start with the Mangalacharan prayers. Let me share the screen. Okay. Um, if you want, you can show Veda base and uh, Mangala Charan prayers. Am I sharing? No. It's still not. Nurse. Now? Yeah. Yes, sharing. Okay, thanks. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Scha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshuri Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Patarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shrivat Adi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, welcome everyone once again for the Bhagavad Gita class. Today is another very important class. I did not say that on WhatsApp or in the email message, but I should have. But today's class is extremely important. So we are in the Bhakti Yoga chapter, devotional service, which is chapter 12. And as you know, Bhakti Yoga is the core essence of Bhagavad Gita. And within that, there are three sections and we are, this is the third section of the uh, chapter on Bhakti Yoga and arguably the most important section among the three, at least uh, I find that. So in the first section, Lord Krishna is saying that, or Arjun asks a question, which worship is better, the worship of your personal form or the avyakta form or the impersonal form. Uh, and Lord Krishna says both are valid, but those who worship the personal form, they are definitely the best. Not only that, he says that Tesham Aham Samudharta Mrityu Samsara Sagarat that I deliver them personally Samudharta Aham Samudharta from the Mrityu Samsara Sagar. So that is the benefit of worship of the personal form and he says that the Worship of impersonal form is full of dukkha and klesha. It is very difficult. Then 
to the personal form worship of the personal form is exemplified by always focusing your mind on krishna so focusing the mind on krishna is explained in the next section that the highest level the shuddha bhakti level is to always think of krishna to always keep krishna in your consciousness i am not showing anything so i am just speaking so uh am i sharing any screen no prabhu ji no yeah that's the intent no prabhu yeah so kindly just listen to the bhagavad gita keep the bhagavad gita in front of you in your hands if possible 12th chapter and i'm just quickly reviewing the first two sections and then we will go into the third section so um in the second section lord krishna is saying that the shuddha bhakti is to always think of krishna always think of me and those who think of me those who are always keeping me in their consciousness i personally deliver them even if they cannot think of me at the time of death i will personally take them into the spiritual world from this mrityu samsara sagar aham samuddharta i will pick them up i will deliver them from this mrityu samsara sagar which means the entire material world it does not mean it does not mean just the earth planet and take them into swarga no mrityu samsara sagar means the entire material world there is death mrityu even in the heavenly planets even in swarga even all the way up to brahma loka there is death so mrityu samsara sagar means that then lord krishna says that my pure devotees have this is the third section so you can show maybe the verse number 13 onwards so here we are in a room and i'm just just they're showing the 13th verse and this is what i would like you to see and understand from the 13th verse of 12th chapter all the way till the 20th verse 13 to 20 is eight verses lord krishna is describing who are my pure devotees how do they behave what are their qualities but that is not the important point yes good qualities must be developed and these good qualities have been described in the previous chapters as well but we are in the bhakti yoga section so please try to pay very 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 careful attention to this point that i'm missing some of my notes but that's okay one second okay it's okay so the most important point is by this time of the 12th chapter we have covered in detail bhakti to lord krishna as the most important form of spiritual advancement the best the easiest fastest best easiest and then lord krishna is saying that the devotees if they develop these qualities i am very happy i am very very pleased so he is clearly saying what makes him happy he has already told things which make him happy just a little offering of a leaf a flower a fruit with love makes him happy similarly he is saying if the devotee develops these qualities i am very 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 happy so lord krishna is not emphasizing only he is absolutely emphasizing on what we must do offering fruits flowers with love and devotion love and devotion is a key ingredient yes but there are activities in the second section lord krishna very very mercifully describes always think of me but if you cannot do that just do practice of thinking of me do some activities offer me do some sadhana bhakti chant my name uh, offer me some flowers you know do some service if you cannot do that work for me 
go and engage in the material world do something for it will make me happy if you cannot so he is giving this whole list if you cannot do that at least do this at least do this ultimately lord krishna is saying that if you do these things i am very happy it pleases me so now lord krishna is going to give a whole list of qualities that one must develop if one loves krishna so if you love krishna here is another thing that lord krishna is saying that you must do okay so this is the main point those who love krishna must actively try to develop these qualities it is not only about chanting krishna's name reading shrimad bhagavatam offering bhoga uh, worshiping in the temple that is definitely there 100% that must be done at the same time one must develop these qualities as well that makes krishna very 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 happy so it's in the domain of doing plus who you are being behavior behavior is in the domain of being and the other activities are in the domain of doing the navadha bhakti the nine processes of devotional service are in the more in the doing aspect you can actually see what you are doing whether you are doing kirtanam whether you are doing shravanam whether you are remembering the lord doing meditation pada sevanam archana you are doing worship of the lord you are singing some prayers all those things you can at least external there is some external uh, manifestation here we are talking about the internal mind the internal consciousness of the devotees this is also very 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 important and it absolutely is required for pleasing for becoming dearer to krishna so with that let us and in the beginning stages one can develop 5% 10% of these qualities no problem this development is gradual at very advanced stages the devotees may develop 60 70 80 90 99% 100% of these qualities so don't think that oh you know i cannot develop all these qualities does not matter start developing pick one or two qualities and whichever appeal to you and start developing them so the first two verses uh our acharyas say we must really really try to develop those qualities the remaining verses so this section has how many verses anybody remembers eight eight very nice eight. yes 13 to 20 20 all right it is divided into three sections this eight verses divided into three sections 2 plus 5 plus 1 how much it is 2 plus 5 plus 1 what well, eight so first two verses acharya say we must definitely try to develop when we develop these qualities in the first two verses which means 13 14 automatically by krishna's grace by his mercy some of the qualities of the next five verses begin to emerge in us so there is both we try to develop and krishna he can make anything happen he can make a bad person into a good person so we will see some of the qualities now don't think that we should not work on those qualities we should definitely work on those qualities as well <coughs> but those then begin but the main point is that the first two verses we must try to develop it's on us not on krishna not on guru it's on us we have to develop you cannot just be chanting hare krishna and go and be a you know materialistic person and you know craving for sense gratification money or this lust and anger and greed outside and then in the morning you get up and you know do your puja and then outside you you know are there is no difference between you and somebody who is a complete materialist that does not work so these first two verses definitely on us the remaining five also on us but krishna begins to help us in making that progress the last verse is the where lord krishna says this is the sum of all the activities which are present everything in all the previous seven verses in a pure devotee so the eighth verse is representing the pure devotee of the lord 
who has all these qualities in fullest. Okay, so that is how this whole section is uh, arranged. Remember, eight verses, two plus five plus one. So let us look at the first two, which are together. Advesta sarva bhuta naam maitra karuna evacha nirmamo nirahankaraha samma dukha sukha kshami santushta satatam yogi yatat madhra nishchayaha mai arpita mano buddhir yomad bhakta same priyaha. So, another important point all these verses that we will read, they end in. Yo me, yo mad bhakta same priyaha, or some slight variation of that. So the emphasis here is not on developing the good qualities just for becoming a good person. That is not the point. We, I, by this time, we have gone to the, to the level where we develop the good qualities to please Krishna, because we are so much in love. The devotee is so much in love of so much bhakta of Krishna, just for that reason, he develops these good qualities. So bhakta does what Krishna wants, not what he thinks is right or wrong, but if something Krishna likes, they will do. Like Arjuna, he is willing to kill for Krishna. In the first chapter, Arjuna said, why should I kill? It's a bad thing to kill and especially friends. But after the Bhagavad Gita, he is prepared to do that because Krishna wants to deliver justice, dharma. It's a dharma yuddha. So for Krishna, anything a devotee does. So because Krishna is saying, yo mat bhakta same priyaha, such a person, a bhakta is very dear to me. Therefore, we must develop these qualities only because Krishna wants. Okay, that is the mood of a bhakta. Whether he will himself become a good person out of it is a byproduct. Yes, everybody wants to become a good person. That becomes a byproduct. Primary product is happiness of Krishna, happiness of the beloved of the devotee. Who is the beloved of devotee? Krishna. So that is the distinction. End result may be the same. If an outside person sees, oh, he's a very good person. But if you see the internal mood, the mood is he is a good person because he wants to please Krishna rather than because he wants to be a good person for the sake of being a good person for some internal satisfaction. Oh, I am a good person. Some, you know, somebody may have some pride in the heart. I'm a very good person. None of that is present. The only thing is my Krishna is happy. So I have to be a good person. Why? Because he said in Bhagavad Gita. Not only once, after every verse he has said. So that is the point. Please try to understand the uh, focus of this section. Focus is to please Krishna by becoming a good person. So now some very, very important points are here. So first point is Advesta Sarva Bhutana. Advesta. Dvesha means envy, jealousy, or some kind of feeling like, oh, he did this to me, I will do this to him. So devotees are never thinking like that. They are always advesta, always, you know, non-envious. Look at uh, Prahalad Maharaj, greatest devotee of Lord. His father was trying to kill him in so many ways. Was he trying to attack back? Was he trying to argue? No, he was always chanting Lord's name. The Lord is protecting him. No envy, no nothing. So many examples are there. It's full. Any example you take, you take any example, there will be the example of Advesta in such a pure devotee. Any example of pure devotee you take, any example. Parikshit Maharaj, when he was cursed by Shringi, the son of sage Shamika, because Parikshit Maharaj, again, then another thing is there that Parikshit Maharaj, in that spur of the moment, he committed an offense to the sage the son ended up cursing him. Then he came back to his senses. Oh, I did something wrong. Uh, maybe that sage was, you know, meditating. He did not see me. He thought when he went to the uh, ashram of the sage, he will get some respect from the sage. So Parikshit Maharaj kind of slipped a little bit from his principle. 
but anyway the sage did not uh, when the sage realized that he had been offended the parishit maharaj put a dead snake around his neck just as a act of uh, retaliation or something he was fine but his son became very angry that my father has been offended or has been insulted so he went and cursed parishit maharaj very calmly he did not retaliate he could have cursed back similarly chitraketu maharaj again i am you may not know all these stories but we have one hour to cover all these eight verses so i am going quickly so you can you know read these all these are nice examples from shrimad bhagavatam when he was cursed by mother parvati he did not retaliate at all he just accepted it okay there are so many other examples so sarvabhutanam advesta sarvabhutanam maitra karuna evacha very friendly maitra and karuna very friendly to everyone karuna out of compassion one is friendly to everyone and how is one developing this quality of karuna and friendliness by nirmama nirahankara by giving up this uh uh this 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 propensity or this feeling of mama mine nirmama nirmam doesn't mean cruel that is another word nirmama here nirmama means it's a joining of two words nir and mama no feeling of mine this is mine that is mine that is mine detached what is ours everything belongs to the lord in the saturday classes we are going through isha vashyam idam sarvam yat kincha jagatyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjitha ma ghridha kasya sviddhanam that everything belongs to the lord isha vashyam idam sarvam yat kincha jagatyam jagat everything that is there in this whole jagat belongs to the supreme lord what is ours one day, even this body is not ours so what are we attached to even if we are attached to we will be pulled out our soul will be pulled out of this body one day so nirmama nirahankar no ahankar at all then shri vishwanath chakravarti thakur describes that if like this one lives then people will take advantage of him people will think you are weak people will think uh, you know will will slap you will will you know whatever will take advantage of you will make you a fool then the answer is sama sag sukha dukha it doesn't mean that dukha will not come dukha comes in the life of a devotee but one is sama means equipoised he does not get disturbed in sukha or dukha he does not get disturbed he treats them both he doesn't get too happy in sukha either too happy or he is not too sad not too distressed when dukha comes both he is equipoised like jad bharat if you have heard that story of jad bharat we covered that in the past few weeks again going quickly when the decoits caught him to sacrifice him to mother kali the decoits first gave him lot of food lot of put chandan on his body decorated him he did not care they were like you know decorating him they were giving him all things because before sacrifice you are supposed to do that to the sacrificial whatever person or animal he was just absorbed in thoughts of the lord and then when they were about to cut his head to offer him from for sacrifice mother kali jumped out of the deity took the sword from the hands of the decoits and killed all of them to save his devotee but he was and he just got up and walked away he did not uh, you know rejoice when he was being honored nor did he become distressed or anxious when he was about to be killed so these are very very elevated devotees we can become 5% point point zero zero five percent we can try to become okay so sama sukha dukha sudama brahman he was very content he was very poor but he was a great devotee of the lord but he was happy okay later on you all know the story of sudama but later on when he got lot of wealth and all still he was as same devotee as before no change so whether you are so it does not mean that devotee does not experience any 
dukkha. The part is that he takes it as sama, sukha dukkheshu. And then kshama, kshami. He does not again take any dvesha, adveshta against those who are the aggressors. He forgives them. Kshami, very forgiving. Now there's a, the, all these one, one word can be all, you know, five hour discussion. So uh, those who are listening on YouTube or Zoom or anywhere in the future or you all, uh, one of very, very great devotees, Hari Parshad Prabhu is taking a long, uh, posting a series of uh, classes on Upadesh Amrita where he's taking one word of verse and elaborating on it for three, four hours. So one whole verse has taken almost 10 weeks. Not of Bhagavad Gita, of a different scripture, but similar. So there is so much, so much, so much to be, depth to be gone into. So Kshama, again, the purpose of Kshama is not to, again, it is not that, oh, I have forgiven, now you come and hit me again. I have forgiven, you come and hit me again. That is not the point. The point which we will cover also, Yatatma Dridhanishchayaha. It is connected with the Dridhanishchaya. Okay? Means the Dridhanishchaya means he is very determined to make spiritual progress. That is the goal. So, Kshama, if you don't do, you will bear a grudge. Somebody has done something to you. Somebody has given you Dukkha. Now you are always thinking Dukkha. Why he did this? Why he should not have done? You are carrying the burden he may have forgotten. He may be a nasty person. And nasty people don't remember to whom they have done bad things, maybe. But you may think. So he may not be carrying the burden. You are carrying that burden. Why? Why? Forgive and move on with your primary goal. Like if you are going to catch a plane on the airport. Okay? And if the auto rickshaw meter is not good, he charged you more. You know it should be like 100 rupees. His meter is, you know, Rigged, it came 150. So now you can stand there and fight and miss the flight, isn't it? What is the intelligent thing to do? Just tolerate. Santushta, we will see Santushta, which will also come here also. Santushta, Yakshami, Santushta Satatam Yogi. Just be satisfied. Tolerate and move on. Forgive and don't while you are sitting in the flight and you have planned that I will do all this work. I will read this book. I will do my chanting. Now instead you are thinking I got cheated. I got cheated. I got cheated. What is the point? So you are losing so much time for just 50 rupees. Forgive. Forgiving means to let go so that you can move on in your spiritual life. In the devotional, in the bhakti line. In the bhakti understanding, forgiveness means don't let anything come. Don't carry that burden which will stop you from your bhakti. Either you can keep thinking of your all the things people have done to you or you can use the time that you have to do your bhakti. It is your choice. And to give up, to let go of that baggage is kshama. Okay? So kshami, sama sukha dukha kshami, santushta, how can you be sama sukha dukha? By santushti, by whatever little you have. Santushta means whatever little you have. So I will be satisfied only after getting million dollars. No, that is not santushta. Santushta means whatever you have today, not when you get X, Y, Z. So santushta, always satatam. Not tomorrow, not day after tomorrow, today, satatam. Whatever situation you are in, be satisfied with what you are. Again, the main goal is bhakti. So, santushta satatam yogi. And yatatma dridhanishchaya. That is the dridhanishchaya. To be firmly fixed in bhakti. That is my goal. Everything else is just useless or secondary. Okay? Yo mad bhakta same priha. Such a person is very, very sorry. Mai and the most important thing. Sorry, I 
forgot this line. Mai arpita mano buddhir. So the Dridh Nishchaya is for what? Mai arpita mano buddhir. Bhagavan is saying Mai means to me arpita. To give one's mind and one's intelligence. Which means focus. How do you give your mind and intelligence? You don't take it out and give on a plate. No. Giving your mind and intelligence means focusing your mind and intelligence on who? Mai. Mai is who here? Who is Lord speaking? Krishna. Bhagavad Gita? Krishna. So Mai Arpita Mano Buddhir. That is the main focus. Everything else is secondary. And through these behavioral gunas, these qualities of, let us quickly revise what are the qualities. First, Dridha Nishchaya. Having the first, having the Having the determination. determination. That is my goal. Everything else is secondary. Dhrihanishchaya. Then being satisfied with whatever else is there. Okay. A student who wants to, you know, get good marks in the exam, whether electricity is there or not. If electricity is not there, he will turn on the candle and read. He will not complain. Oh, electricity is not there. AC is. You want to get good marks or not? Okay. The time is limited. Exam is there. Light up the candle and study. Okay. So don't be in this, uh, you know, complaining. Always complaining, complaining, complaining. Then you have missed the boat. So Santushta and Kshami, who if some person has done something to you, forgive and move on. Forgive and move on. Forgive and move on. Sama Sukha Dukha. Treat everything with Sukha. I'm going in reverse. Sama Sukha Dukha. No ahankar, don't have any, uh, ahankar means what you have. Nirmama ahankar means pride about what you have because tomorrow it may not be there. And when it is taken away tomorrow, then you will be a santushta. So don't have pride about what you have today because it is never yours. Nirmama, it is never yours. Your body is not yours. One day it will be taken away. So everything like this. Advesta sarvabhutana maitra karuna evacha. Nirmamo nirahankaraha samadukha kshami. Santushta satatam yogi yadatma dhrha nishchayaha. Mai man arpita mano buddhir yo mad bhakta same priyaha. Very, very, very important verse of how a devotee prioritizes bhakti in his life. Okay, otherwise you can be, there are 10,000 things you can be bothered about. Or you can let yourself be bothered about. And then it's gone. Next, 15th. Yasmat no dvijate loko, lokan no dvijate chayaha, harsha marsha bhayo dvegair, mukto yasame chap, yasame, yasa chame priyaha. So, again, yasa chame priyaha. Next verse, we are on 15. Such a person, such a devotee is me priyaha, dear to me. So what kind of person? Yasmat no dvijate loko. That uh, na udvija. Udvija means to disturb or to put somebody in anxiety. So yasmat na udvijate loko. Because of him, loka means other people are not put into anxiety. Udvijate, na udvijate. Loka na udvijate chayaha. And who does not become anxious because of other people? So he does not only not become anxious by other people, he does not do anything to make other people anxious or distressed. Loka na udvijate chayaha. Harsha amarsha bhayo dvegair. So, Udvega, again, no distress, no fear, not giving any bhaya or dvega. One who is free from harsha and amarsha. One who is completely free from all the happiness, all the distress. There will be another point that will come here. Mana apamana yo. So, one, where is that? Mm. Yeah, in the 18th verse, it will come. Mana apamana. So, you can think of like, when you are given mana, you are happy. Apamana, you are unhappy, isn't it? 
So another example, beautiful example is Jada Bharat. In a different scenario, I gave the example of Jada Bharat when he was about to be killed by decoits, he was captured. Then later on, he was asked to lift the palanquin of King Rahuguna. Though he was not supposed to, he was just put into that situation. He very calmly, he accepted. Okay, I will pull the, I will carry the palanquin. He was not uh, at all uh, um, angry or frustrated or cursing somebody or, you know, doing any of those things. He was just took it in its stride. And then when King Rahuguna was berating him because he was not carrying the palanquin properly because he was caring for the ants on the, on the ground. There were ants on the ground. So he was like trying to avoid the ants. So the palanquin was going a little bit like this and this and this. And the king who was sitting in the palanquin was getting angry. Who is shaking my palanquin like this? So he berated him. Do you not care for your life? I will kill you if you don't carry the palanquin properly. He was given a lot of apman. Then later on, when the king realized that this Jad Bharat is such an elevated personality, he fell at his feet. And he realized, Jada Bharat revealed to him, I am the Bharat, the King Bharat, the King Bharat, after whom this land is named as Bharat Varsha. King Rahuguna almost was in a shock that, oh my God, I have been uh, insulting and berating this topmost person, spiritual person. So he fell at his feet. He was not very overjoyed. Oh, now he realizes what a great man I am. Nothing like that. So, Harsha Amarsha, Bhayo Dvegair, free of fear, just like again, Jad Bharat. He was free of fear, even when he was about to be killed. Parikshit Maharaj, when he was cursed to die in seven days, he was not afraid. Instead, he chose to take the shelter of Srimad Bhagavatam. The best utilization of his seven days and then he said, "That's that. then it will be happy ending of my life. The life has to end one day or the other. Okay, I have seven days. At least I know I have seven days. Because he was cursed to die in seven days, he at least knew he cannot die before. Otherwise, also the curse will go in vain. So now, another way to look at it is, he is guaranteed seven days of life. Is anybody here guaranteed seven minutes of life even? Huh? No. He was guaranteed seven days of life. That's another way to look at it. And he made the best utilization of those. So no bhaya, no anxiety. He was completely not anxious when he was about to die. Parikshit Maharaj. Okay, such a person is very dear to me. Number 16. <clears throat> Udasino gata vyataha sarva rambha parityagi yomad bhakta same priyaha. Again, yomad bhakta same priyaha. Such a person, Bhagwan is saying, is very dear to me. So, once again, we must try to become such a person only because it pleases the Lord, not for any other reason. Everything else is a byproduct. So, what is that? Anapekshaha, one who has no expectations for anything from anybody else from anybody so no material expectations anapekshaha shuchir means clean shuchi and not only clean externally but clean internally so shuchi means external cleanliness and internal purity that's why this word shuchi is translated in two ways purity and cleanliness cleanliness refers to external cleanliness devotee is externally clean but more importantly, he is internally clean, which means his heart is clean, which means purity. Daksha means he is expert. Expert not in manipulating people, not in cheating, not in duplicity. We are all expert in Kali Yuga and these things. But devotee is expert in his devotional service. He is expert in reading Srimad Bhagavatam, in reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, in sharing with others the glories of Krishna. That is what he is expert in. Not in the worldly things. So Daksha means expert. Udasina means detached. Detached from this material world. Gata Vyathaha. 
vyatha vyatha means you all know vyatha means distress so free from all distress gata vyatha sarvarambha parityagi sarvarambha means all types of hard labor okay so labor must be done you must do your work to earn a living now one can ask that okay if i am not caring if i am santushta then why am i santushta why do i need to eat i can be santushta with uh, hunger okay you can say okay you are hungry why do you need food just tolerate be santushta with your hunger no some living even the brahmachari uh, Brahm, uh, brahmanas sanyasis also go and do madhukari madhukari you know they go and beg from five houses according to the vedic uh, standards from five houses they will beg for some food whatever they get they will offer to the lord and then eat so they are doing that work for brahmanas for kshatriyas they have to do some management administration vaishyas have to do some business shudras have to do some work under the vaishyas or under the kshatriyas you know they have to you know whatever work they may do uh, like in a company you have software engineers they are not the designers maybe they are told what to do so they are like in a company you need all four it's not a good or bad you need can a company survive a software company without software engineers only designers if they are there you can design uh, you know pages and pages of designs who will implement it so software engineers are like shudra designers may be like the brahmanas vaishyas are like your sales and marketing you can have the best product but if you don't sell it what is the point right who will pay for the salaries so you need sales and marketing that is vaishyas and you need management to manage the whole thing otherwise it will be chaos so they are the kshatriyas right so in any society you need these so you can do you can earn a living but not like 18 hours night that is passion that is sense gratification that oh i want to work so much work so much so that i will get this title i will become whatever you know senior whatever title add senior top of it on top of it vice president senior vice president software engineer senior software engineer all that race so santushta but do your work for a living that is not against the vedic principles even sanyasis have to do some work at least for the begging for whatever that is also work for them so sarvarambha means no extra endeavor okay even an animal has to do some work to earn its food but he doesn't do extra endeavor even a lion after it has killed one deer then he doesn't go around collecting then he is happy for you know so many days right we are the ones who want to like accumulate 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 and then in america at least we throw away oh expired you buy so many things you accumulate and then you say expired then you have to throw why you had to buy only that is sarvarambha parityagi renounce all that sarvarambha no sarvarambha yo mad bhakta same priya then 17 यो न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि न शोचति न कांक्षति शुभा शुभ परित्यागी भक्तिमान यह समय प्रिय अगेन भक्तिमान सच ए पर्सन हु इज फुल ऑफ भक्ति भक्तिमान लाइक ए पर्सन विद शक्ति इज कॉल्ड व्हाट शक्तिमान सो पर्सन विद भक्ति इज कॉल्ड भक्तिमान सो दिस पर्सन हु इज फुल ऑफ भक्ति यह स मे प्रिय इज वेरी डियर टू मी वॉट काइंड ऑफ भक्तिमान यो न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि अगेन लाइक आई एक्सप्लेन डज नॉट टेक प्लेजर और रिजॉइस इन प्लेजर और ग्रीव इन पेन टॉलरेट्स टॉलरेट्स वॉट एवर इज देयर न शोचति न कांक्षति मीन्स नीदर लेमेंट्स नॉर डिजायर्स अगेन द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ जड़ भरत वी गेव आई नोटेड सम मोर एग्जाम्पल्स हियर like uh parikshit maharaj he did not lament when he was cursed similarly chitraketu now chitraketu had two different uh, we we did all these stories in our bhagavatam uh, discussions which we do on saturdays earlier he lamented so much so much so much 
when his only son died. First, he got the son after so much uh, effort. Finally, by the blessings of Angira Muni, he got a son. Then by whatever you can, without going into the details of the story, that son died. He had, that was the only son. And he was so much in lamentation. Narad Muni and Angira Muni came back and said, okay, we will make the son alive. Do you want that? His, his wife said, yes, I want that. So the son came back to life. And then, the, uh, then Narad Muni said, these are your father and mother. Go hug them. Go, you know, kiss them, hug them. They are so much lamenting because you were dead. Now you are back to life. You know what the son said? I cannot remember. I have had millions of fathers and mothers. Which one are these? Because the son, when he had died, then he could remember all his past lives. And then he came back as the son in that body. He had that remembrance and he could not remember. Which one are these? He was completely, he said, ah, why are you bringing me back into the body? I was on my journey. Let me go forward in my journey. Why are you pulling me back? Then King Chitraketu and his wife Kritadyuti became detached from their son. They were satisfied. Then they cremated the body. The son left. They, they gave permission for the son to go. Okay, you go. So they became detached. Shubha Ashubha Parityagi. So the, this one is na shochati na kankshati. No lamentation, no desires. Whatever comes out of its own accord is fine. Shubha ashubha parityagi. Whatever good or bad, auspicious or inauspicious that comes, you renounce that. Materially auspicious and inauspicious things. So everything is renounced and uh, yeah so let us move forward bhakti man ya same priya then 18 and 19 samaha shatrau na cha mitre cha tatha mana apamana yo shito shana sukha dukheshu samaha sanga vivarjitah Tulya ninda stutir mauni santushto yena kena chit aniketa sthit sthir matir bhakti man me priyo naraha. So this bhakti man, such a bhakti man person, me priyo naraha. So one important point is nara. Bhagavad Gita is meant for humanity, nara. Not just for Arjuna and not even for animals. Oh, Bhagavad Gita is not for, basically we all think Bhagavad Gita is not for me. Are you a Nara? Nara includes Nari also. Nara means the species, Nara. So as long as you all agree that you are Nara, here is an indication in Bhagavad Gita that it is meant for all of humanity. Lord Krishna speaks in these words for Manushya, for Nara, for Vyakti, for people. Bhagavad Gita is for the people, for the humans. So what kind of people who are the bhaktas? Samaha shatra cha mitre cha. One who is sama to a shatru or a mitra. Who is equal to an enemy or a friend. Again, beautiful example is Prahlad Maharaj. So many demons based on the, or the you know, cruel instructions or the orders of his father Hiranyakashyap were trying to kill him, but he was so calm and peaceful. He had no um, um, anger or no hatred for his enemies. Even Jesus Christ, those people who were crucifying him based on the orders of the Roman king, Jesus Christ said, you know, forgive these people because they don't know what they are doing. So, Sama Shatra Chamitrecha Tatha Man Apamana Yoha. Again, same thing for Sama Tatha. And so, in the same way, Sama for Mana and Apamana. Don't take honor and dishonor to heart. Again, the focus should be on Bhakti. 
if you start getting entangled he said this he said this he she said this then your mind is more focused on you how could so and so say this to me or do this to me i am such a good person i did this all that because then there is expectation so when you do good to someone you expect they will behave properly so that is akanksha expectation na shochati na kankshati kankshati means no akanksha no expectation be a good person mitro it is right here samha shatrau cha mitre be a friend but don't expect them to be a friend to you it's nice if they are friend don't rejoice if they be nice to you and don't be distressed if they don't be nice to you don't expect and devotee always thinks that if something bad is happening it is because of my own doing some past doing like you know if the tongue uh, is bitten by the teeth you don't go and you know take out uh, uproot your teeth it's your own teeth so devotee thinks it's my own past karma now this doesn't mean that you uh, you know don't uh, uh, take proper uh, whatever protections or you know you for example don't wear seat belt while driving oh you know i will you know uh, just tolerate i will accept it as karma if i have an accident then i die because i didn't wear seat belt then it is my karma no that is also wrong so shila prabhupad explains that do whatever protections are necessary don't overdo don't overdo you don't all go on and you know when you send your children to school do you send them with bulletproof jacket these days all the school shootings and all happen then you should send your child with don't overdo and after your whatever protections you have taken wear your seat belt cross the street when there is red light uh, i mean the for the traffic and the walking light there is this thing you know oh even if it is red we are devotees let's cross krishna will protect no 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 so there is very important point please understand this where to draw the line do whatever protection you have to do take whatever precautions do whatever then if it doesn't work out accept it as krishna's plan accept it as a result of your past karma okay wear your seat belt don't cross the road when the traffic is moving and all the other things you know take your medicines it doesn't mean that don't go to the doctor okay but some people you may think you know see are very crazy you know they will do like uh, one sneeze and they will go and do all mri scan and everything you know too much overdoing no need for that either okay fine after some time you didn't do all those things and let's say you get some you discover there was cancer and if you had done all those 20 th- things overdid maybe you would have been saved maybe okay but devotee thinks that i will do what is reasonable and then whatever else happens i will accept it as krishna's plan the benefit in this whole thing is in doing whatever is the reasonable thing you have done and it's there and focused the rest of your time in bhakti if your mind is focused in all this protecting yourself is the only thing that you care about then where is the time left or your mental bandwidth left for bhakti not there yes maybe you will survive one or two uh, accidents at what cost at the cost of completely neglecting your purpose of human body nara you are in nara so you must do bhakti that you didn't do you simply elongated your life little bit you stretched the rubber band a little bit more than than its you know expiry date whatever limit great congratulations but you lost out on the main purpose okay so that is the line to be drawn do whatever is you know within a certain limit and if it doesn't work out accept it as krishna's plan your past based on your past um 
reactions, karma. That should be the principle. And that allows you to focus on your bhakti. So, tatha mana apamana yo, shita ushana, shita ushana, heat or cold, sukha, dukha, samaha in all these things being equipoised and then very important sangha vivarjitaha sangha vivarjitaha means giving up bad association not all association sangha vivarjitaha means giving up bad association and good association means association of devotees so associating with good people good things not uh, you know all the rotten things that come on the phone or on all that all that you can go to all kind of things which will pollute your mind. So associating with good things, even with the phone, you can associate with good. It's very good use of the phone can be done in bhakti, which was not available before, but there's a great risk of temptation. So if you can control, great. Otherwise, better to avoid. Okay, like don't play with the knife. That's why we tell children, don't play with the knife. The knife is very useful in the kitchen, isn't it? Can you cook food without knife? Mataji's, Prabhuji's, no. But do you let children play with the knife? No, because they don't know how to do proper use of the knife. But the cooks, Prabhuji's, Mataji's, the older ones can use the knife properly. Therefore, you don't restrict yourself from using the knife. Okay. Similarly, like nuclear weapons, if in the hands of responsible countries, it can be used as a way to keep peace. But in the hands of wrong people, it can be used to create war. Sama Sangha Vivarjitaha means giving up bad association. Then Tulya Ninda Stutir Mauni. Tulya means balanced in Stuti or Ninda. Same thing. Whether you receive Ninda, you receive apman, you receive bad, uh, whatever, uh, defamation. Or stuti means you are glorified. Equal in those. And mauni means being quiet. Now, being quiet means only being quiet from the standpoint of material nonsense. But you can definitely speak Krishna Katha. You can speak devotional things. You can talk to devotees. If devotee needs some help, yes. Even though you're not directly speaking Krishna Katha, you're speaking to a devotee, taking care of them, being friend, friends with a devotee. All that is perfectly fine. Mauni means stop all nonsense talk. Nonsense talk, Mauna. And then Aniketaha Sthira Matir. Aniketa means not attached to residence. Residence means a particular type of residence or a particular place of residence. Oh, India is not good. I want to go to America. That one, that is the good place. I want residence. No, you don't only want residence, you want permanent residence. Green card. So all that stuff. So, and a particular type of residence. So rental is not good. I want a own house. My own house in this place, in this, 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 this. The mind is so much agitated because of all these things. So Aniketaha means having no attachment to a particular type or place of residence. Wherever you are, be happy. You can keep wandering and be happy, but what should be fixed? Not the place of residence does not need to be fixed, but the mind should be fixed. Thitar, sthira matir, fixed on Krishna. So fix your mind on Krishna. Don't worry about your external circumstances. Internally be fixed. Externally be flexible. That is the meaning of aniketaha sthir matir. Externally flexible. Internally fixed. Fixed in Krishna. In Bhakti. Following? Bhakti man me priyo naraha. Such a person, nara, such a human is very dear to Krishna. Last verse, then the most important out of all of these, yet, and you will see the contrast, yetu dharma amritam idam 
यथोक्त परुपासते श्रद्धाना मत परमा भक्तास्ते अतीव मे प्रिय अतीव यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंड वेरी मच सो सो फार ही वॉज सींग भक्तास्ते मे प्रिय नाउ ही सींग अतीव मे प्रिय वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ डिवोटी इज वेरी 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 डियर इफ यू सी द ट्रांसलेशन शिल प्रभुपाद इज गोन से इज वेरी टू टाइम्स अतीव सी गो डाउन गो डाउन गो डाउन सी वेरी वेरी डियर टू मी यू सी दैट अतीव लास्ट लाइन making me the supreme goal are very very dear to me ativa me priya so let us see what is the ativa part here ye tu dharma amritam idam so idam we'll start with that word this idam means this okay what is this referring to what can this refer to in any conversation It can refer to what you have just said or you can refer to everything that has been said Yeah. either way for the last 6 chapters krishna has been talking about bhakti for the last 7 verses krishna has been talking about good qualities either way it is bhakti only whether you take just the last 7 verses or the last 6 chapters idam to ye tu dharma amritam this is known as amrit dharma the highest dharma highest dharma is bhakti what is that verse uh pum uh, yato bhaktir adhokshaje uh, ahaituki apratihata yayatma su prasidati how it starts uh, sa sari pum sam paro dharma ha can you say loudly sari pum sam paro dharmo yato sari pum sam paro dharmo so in the shrimad bhagavatam it says sa vai pumsham pumsham means for humanity paro dharmo the topmost dharma yato bhaktir adhokshaje adhokshaje means krishna or narayana is bhakti to krishna as the param dharma the topmost dharma okay then comes the in dharma there are levels like for arjuna one of the dharma is not to kill your friends okay that is what he presented in chapter 1 but there is a paro dharma which is what krishna wants that is bhakti and in that case krishna wanted these bad people these demoniac people like duryodhana and all his associates to be killed so arjuna was not killing out of his anger or hatred for them he was killing as a order carrier of krishna that was his consciousness the act is the same but his consciousness was completely different so similarly we do what krishna wants and here krishna is saying so many things this is what will make me happy if your child says mamma rasgulla will make me happy gulab jamun will make me happy will you give him a neem fruit which is bitter no you will give him what he wants for his birthday you ask him no what do you want so krishna is saying i want all these things he has given us such a long list so this is the topmost dharma to fulfill what krishna wants savaim pumsho paro dharmo yato bhaktir adhokshaje ahaituki ati pratihata unbroken and without motivation without any expectation oh if i do bhakti to krishna he will make me a millionaire like sudama he did for sudama now i'm waiting when will he do that to me no that is all sudama didn't care even when he got all the riches he didn't care ahai tuki apratihata yay atma suprasidati this is the topmost gives the highest satisfaction to the soul atma okay so that is what is mentioned here dharma amritam this is the topmost dharma paro dharmo like in that verse here dharma amritam idam this one bhakti is the topmost dharma krishna is saying what i have just spoken yatho uktam ukta means to speak yatho uktam that i have spoken par yupasate one who is engaging completely in this dharma 
So if you do the kind of joining of the Sanskrit words here, those who completely engage Paryupasate in this idam Amrita Dharma, topmost dharma that I have just spoken, Yathoktam. How? With Shraddha, Shraddha Dhana, with lot of faith. So please, faith is required. Krishna is saying, please follow this. Follow this. Don't be afraid. There are so many things to be afraid about here. People may take advantage of you. People may cheat you. People may hurt you. Some dukkha may come. Don't work 18 hours. Work 8 hours only. You may not get the senior title. That's all okay. Please. The end result will be sweet. It may not be sweet in the immediate time frame. You may see other people being so-called happy, but if you even go and look inside their life, they may have their own bigger problems because they are not Krishna conscious. Your life will be much better, guaranteed much better. Not only in the future, even today. You will be so happy in bhakti, so satisfied, so happy. So, Shraddha is required. And what is the dharma? In one word, the dharma is what? Mat parama. That is the topmost dharma, mat parama. Means considering mat means me, parama, to be the topmost goal. Highest priority. Everything else is secondary. Like catching the flight is the highest priority. Why you have to argue with the rickshaw fellow? Otherwise you will miss the flight. Isn't it? It's okay. Let it go. Forget it. Just focus on the flight and what you have to be on the do on the flight, your japa, your chanting, your whatever, reading the book, Bhagavad Gita. Make use of the time you have planned instead of getting bogged down by your history. Huh? We are so much bogged down by history. This happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. You know, one of the things we are married for 20, I'll say this personal thing. We have been married for 25 years. This thing happens, you know, families. 23. 23 okay, fine. Average. <laughs> one of the things, now this happens between families. One of the things my mother uh, still complains. Oh, when the boys go to the girl's house, right? The Bharat. Oh, the coffee was little not too hot. Coffee was a little warm. 23 years have gone. We have even children, teenage children. They are doing so nicely. She has, you know, such nice grandsons. Everything is so nice. But the baggage is being carried. Oh, the coffee that was served in the marriage reception was not uh, very hot. So you can live with that baggage. Fine. To that extent, it will... Um, you know, nags you. Huh? The thing nags, you. nags you and it will displace your bhakti. So, anyway, mat parama, topmost goal. Bhakta ste ativa me priya. So, with all these things that one does, this whole dharma one follows. Yatho oktam that I have spoken, whether you consider it last seven verses or last 20 verses of this chapter or the last six chapters of bhakti or the entire Bhagavad Gita so far, 12 chapters, either way, this is the topmost dharma. And if one follows it, te ativa me priyaha. Extremely dear to me. So we will end the class there with your uh, permission and with the request that please understand what Krishna wants, what he is saying will make him happy and do those things then your life will also be very, very happy. Just like a small child. Child is happy. If parents are happy, child is happy. Okay. If parents fight, child becomes very disturbed. So if child is happy, a parent is happy, everybody, all children are very happy. Okay. Are there any questions or any comments or anything. So we have completed 12th chapter.
very important as you can understand these qualities must be developed should be developed it is not just about doing worship offering deep and all and in your heart there is all kind of duplicity he did this she did this i will do this to him i will do that this this the da, 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 da. krishna doesn't like that does not like at all be nice simple people yes sometimes people may take advantage of you it's okay leave it aside keep moving forward okay any comments or any questions are there uh one second let me there is was a question on the yes so one question is does lord krishna sort these four yogas in the order of importance yes we discussed this last time only in 12.12 okay so you can listen to that or read that where lord krishna is putting bhakti at the top and he is saying that bhakti is the topmost even these four categories of bhakti which we discussed last time shuddha bhakti sadhana bhakti seva bhakti one and two levels they are all better than gyan and dhyana so at least that level of sorting is there what is the need to further sort among those like these days mid term elections are going on how do you care who got second vote or third vote the most important thing is who won the election right huh what is the point of uh, thinking oh he came he got the second highest he got third highest he got fourth highest nobody even remembers all that will matter is who is going to the senate or whatever congress the top top is bhakti you can keep arguing among second third fourth not important all right Yes, somebody had a question here. Yeah. What does Bhagavad Gita mean? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that is because Krishna is saying that. Okay, Krishna is saying, and there are certain people who are endowed with the authority to judge. So your question is not that much about forgiving, or I will talk about both. so the question for the you know is uh, for everybody what is the meaning of forgiving and why couldn't krishna forgive everybody why did he order to kill the kauravas the bad guys so to say so there are people and krishna is the ultimate uh you know lord he is the supreme lord he is the supreme king jagannath he is the nath means the lord of the whole jagat so there are people who are in a position of authority who are expected to judge according to dharmic laws and keep everybody in check okay so the king for example is supposed to follow they are called raj rishis they are not just raja but raj rishi means evam parampara praptam idam rajarshayo vidhu that is 4.2 bhagavad gita verse so what lord krishna is saying that this kings are supposed to rule according to the dharmic principles they are rishis also the kings are rishis half rishi half raja means they know the scriptural siddhanta and then they rule so such kings not like today's kings they are all equally clueless so this is not being taught talked about today's all uh, degraded society but they are supposed to judge parents for example are supposed to judge the child if he is doing something wrong but a parents must first be aware of the siddhanta so therefore everybody should understand bhagavad gita and the bhagavad puran and so on and then they will be able to properly guide the child not like hiranyakashipu who was telling prahlad oh you should be interested in wine and women from a young age only he was telling prahlad and prahlad was refusing to learn that all that nonsense so that is what demons do these days all kinds of things are being taught in even young elementary school middle school only such 
nonsense is being taught to children. It is so, also explained uh, in, in different ways, right? Like, he asked, why, why can't we forgive? Why is so, I will come to that. So, first of all, the point to be made is there are certain positions of authority, certain um, um, who can, who are supposed to judge to keep things in order, like a parent for a family or children or a king for a society. Second thing is, in this particular case, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He can judge. And uh, punishment is a is for their betterment because punishment means you are undergoing some suffering which means the karma the negative karma that you have accumulated needs to be um, you have to suffer the reactions so that is punishment even in under dharmic law, there is imprisonment. There is also capital punishment, even in the dharma. So which means that you pay with your life or you play, pay with your freedom if you are imprisoned. And once you pay with that, your reactions are done and then you can get a second chance. Just like today's understanding. Once a criminal, after he has uh, you know, spent jail time, then he's free. He can apply for any job. Whatever crime he did should not be held against him. He should be as equal. So that is a form of the suffering. So forgiveness. But as a devotee, you are not a judge. Are you the king? You may be the judge for your child, but you are not the judge for someone else's child. So their forgiveness comes. So if you are in the position of authority, if you are a manager in a company, you have to judge the quality of your output of the employees. Otherwise, you'll be a bad manager. You cannot just say, oh, I forgive. You have not done any work. I forgive you. Then you will be fired. So you have been put in that position. You have to discharge your duty. As a devotee, whenever you are not in a position of judgment, you should not judge. The most important point which I mentioned is forgiveness allows you to move on with your bhakti. That is the main thing. Otherwise, it holds you back. It's like you are a runner, okay, but somebody has put ropes on your legs and is or is put some elastic on your legs, and you're trying to run, and your elastic is holding you back. Okay. So that is forgiving. Forgiving me, cut off the baggage. Doesn't mean you go love the person, you hug him, you say, oh, you did all these bad things to me. I forgive you and now I want to become your best friend. No. Forgiveness means completely let go for the purpose of your bhakti. And that is what Krishna told Arjuna. Become my devotee, mad bhaktaha. All right. Does that help? So three points I made. Judge when you are according to Siddhanta. When you are in a position of a, a authoritative position of judging. For that you must know Siddhanta. Otherwise don't. And the third thing is in all other cases. Forgive. And in, in judging, you judge and move on. Not like a personal Thing, oh, I judged him. Now you're carrying the baggage. I judged, I judged, I judged. I'm not a good person. I should have forgiven. No, that was your duty. You judged, move on and do your bhakti. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they deserve that. I mean, I mean, that I'm assuming is uh, obvious. The kind of crimes that the Kauravas did. They deserved multiple capital punishments, not one. Paying with it for one life, with one life is not enough. Even in the American law, you sometimes you might have seen, he is given three life punishments or three capital punishments. What does it mean? Can you kill anybody three times? Today you cannot. But when Lord says you three means 
to Dhritarashtra because of some past thing. He gave 50 life punishments. He did something really bad 50 lifetimes ago. So he had to get capital punishment 50 times. Finally, he lost all his sons, everything. Then in this life, he went back to Vaikuntha by the mercy of Vidura. Okay, anything else? So, two, so the question is how do you keep sukha dukha your calmness and when especially some tragic incident happens or something like that so i see some i sense one two as i will answer it based on what i sense two by two ways one is that immediate reaction of dukkha could be there. Okay. Even when uh, Arjuna, when his son was killed, Abhimanyu, he was very sad. Okay. And similarly, many devotees, uh, you know, when, when uh, bad thing, something bad happens, they are sad, but they're able to pick themselves up very quickly. Some people go into permanent depression. That should not be the case. Okay, so it is not like, oh, somebody close relative or friend died. Oh, I'm happy. Not like that. Then devotees are at the same time, they are not hard hearted, steel hearted. They are very soft hearted. They do feel for everyone, not only those who are close relatives, but even strangers. They have a lot of feeling and care. But they know the internal reason that it is happening because of the plan of the Lord. So they are able to come out of that situation very quickly. So yes, uh, is, was that your point? So it is not wrong or it is not. Uh, there are so many cases where the devotees are very sad. Because of, not only because of, uh, sad because of their... Um, uh, lack of bhakti, that is the one thing you should be sad about. That I am, I don't love Krishna that much. But they are sad about material things as well. Okay? So it's not that they don't feel the pain, but they tolerate the pain. And in the immediate circumstance, it can be expressed through emotion. It's fine. But come out of it quickly. Okay. Anything else? Like you love Krishna, it took him so much like uh, uh, negativity around him. Like he ended up to move very quickly and he did all during these two years. Even a lord, creator of the whole universe, ended up in hell to spend so much time in fighting with that. What's the message that he's trying to communicate? So you are talking about the demons that Lord Krishna killed yeah, I mean, in this question. Demons, but also many people around him, like so many kings. Like yeah, they were all demoniac. Demon doesn't mean one with horns and big teeth and black color and all. Demons means demoniac nature is demons. Mm -hmm. So the question is that Lord Krishna killed all these and then... Uh, so what's your question? That no, no, even Lord has to kill so many. Yes. So, what so, about humans? Like, yeah. Like, like, what, are humans like, so, uh, so what is the message? Even God can do why not? Why not we? Not why not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do we tackle it? Why has to go through that? How do we come out with it? By following the instructions of Bhagavad Gita, like it was, we just spent one and a half hours talking about that. Now, first of all, we must understand there is difference between the Lord and us. Many, many people use this logic. Oh, Krishna has said the body dies, the soul never dies. So, boom, I will shoot you. I'm killing the body. The soul cannot be killed. Right? So, I'm just killing the body. I'm not the end. Another thing, you are not the doer. Okay, so I killed, but I am not the doer. 
I didn't kill Bhagavad Gita. All these misinterpretations. There are so many misinterpretations of the scriptures and so many wars have been fought and so much evil is happening based on religion. Okay, so there is huge scope for misinterpretation. Okay. Lord Krishna, when he is killing the demons, the demons are representative of certain traits of anger, of our lust, of our greed, of various aspects. And when the Lord is killing those demons, they are representative of those. So from, from our standpoint, what we are supposed to do is to kill those demoniac qualities within us. And Acharyas have given detailed commentaries about each demon representing a particular negative trait or a quality. Okay. Now, the Lord, when he is killing these demons, okay, the main reason for that is not... So, by the way, when the Lord kills the demon, the demon immediately attains Vaikuntha or Vaikuntha or uh, what I mean to say is liberation, spiritual moksha. There are various types of moksha. We will not go into that. So, that is a great benefit for the demon Otherwise, because of his sinful activities, he has to go through so many cycles of hellish births and deaths. So he's being like, like it's a mercy. Even though you are such a bad demon, you are getting the top uh, benefit or the top prize. That is first thing. The second thing is these specific demons, when they came, all the residents of Vrindavan took shelter of Krishna. That is the message. That when calamities come, take sharana of Krishna. We will talk about that in the next part today. Take sharana of Krishna and Krishna will protect. You don't have to go around killing the demons. Leave it to Krishna. He is the Lord of the universe. He will take care of the demons. He may kill, he may, he did not kill all demons. Kaliya, for example, he did not kill. Even though Kaliya killed so many people, he Kaliya poisoned the Yamuna waters and all the cows and others who came and drank the water, they died. So, in a sense, Kaliya killed the dearmost devotees, the cows and calves and animals uh, of Krishna. But Krishna revived them, of course. But taking shelter of Krishna in the face of calamity and let Krishna deal with the things. Okay, so we should not consider Krishna to be a human or he, it's a wrong way to phrase the sentence, he faced calamities. He doesn't face calamities. That is his orchestration, everything. Maya adhyakshena prakriti suyate characharam. Maya adhyakshena prakriti. I am the director. Adhyaksha means director. I am the director of the whole Prakriti. So everything is happening according to his direction. He is the director. Okay. So director is not suffering. You don't go and ask the director of the movie. Were you sad when this sad scene was happening? No. He is the one who created the sad scene. He wrote the script. The sad scene or whatever is just a movie. He is the director. So the learning is to, for us, take shelter of Krishna and leave the dealing of it with Krishna. Yoga Kshemam Vahamyaham, Bhagavan says, 9.22, that I will take care of your problems. You don't worry. Your job is to be my bhakta. Like a small child, when he faces threat, he just doesn't try to fight the threat. He just cries and runs to mama and papa. Does he try to deal with the threat? No, he runs away and takes shelter of parent. Like that we should be. That is the message. So I have a question. So if Krishna created uh, all the demons, men and whoever it is, then he is, he is the director of those two things. So it is the thoughts and us. So how that matters? Because he is the creator, he is doing that. He is creating those... Uh, no, no, no. So, okay, now we are going into. So the question is, if he cre he is the creator, he is the director. Don't extend the analogy to that level. 
in a movie yes every single dialogue every single hang, hand movement action is under the director's control the actor actress whoever even the extras cannot even do anything without the director's permission so that is extending the analogy too far in krishna's movie whatever we have free will he has given us free will and he has given us the choice to choose x or y in whatever situation so we have the free will this is a little different kind of movie where the actors have some now depending on how you acted and didn't act later on after the movie is over or after the play a better thing is like a live play theater play then the director will take class why you did this but we do have free will and what krishna wants again moving away from the analogy of director and all that that is an analogy taken too far analogy is supposed to be taken for the principle it is trying to illustrate so in krishna's case krishna wants us to love him be his bhakta out of our own free will otherwise you can also say why tell all these things just program me to be a bhakta then i will be a bhakta have you seen matrix movie matrix hmm? you have so there you put that probe in the back of your head and then you programmed to fly a you know helicopter or you're programmed to whatever you can you 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 like that krishna can put that probe in your head and say to from today you are a bhakta so we can also say these demons are bad thoughts this krishna is saying free wills so yes because we have thoughts. the free will and the choice to either indulge in those bad activities because they give temporary pleasure the bad activities give temporary pleasure no doubt but they come with severe reactions just like smoking anybody smoked here yeah. it gives my father used to smoke because he liked mm -hmm. but later on it is has a reaction so yes bad activities do give temporary pleasure just like smoking or drinking or whatever but the consequences build up slowly that is our free choice and krishna wants us to love him out of free choice to be his bhakta out of our free choice not because he programmed us otherwise we are like programmed robots then there is no point to life okay very nice anything else all right so we will end here we were supposed to end at around 7 o'clock but due to q and a and all that very nice questions questions help to clear one's doubt i can keep talking about what i want to talk but unless your doubts are clarified you will still remain stuck so it's better to answer question than to keep just talking what i want whole of bhagavad gita is question answers arjuna asks questions yes lord krishna speaks but whenever arjuna asks a question lord addresses the question he doesn't say wait all right let's see if there's anything over here mm yeah how to console yourself when you don't get good behavior or action in return of your good deeds while others who are regularly performing bad deeds are getting all the good things we just talked about it <laughs> isn't it na shochati na kankshati apply that no akanksha you may do good things but you don't expect others to do good things back to you that makes krishna happy now others we can definitely talk about this for half an hour on this topic itself the other part is on the other hand bad people so many good things keep happening to them that is what you are seeing and the way as a devotee you need to understand this is that because they must have done some past good karma so they are being rewarded 
okay they are being rewarded but one day all their good karma balance will be over and this whatever bad karma they are doing they are also attracting negative they are attracting debt which they will have to pay so you are only seeing a small sliver okay like you go in a movie for 5 minutes and you see the villain beating up the hero then you say oh, what kind of a movie is this hey baba you didn't see the whole movie so you are only seeing this one life the movie of our life spans multiple lifetimes krishna knows that yamaraj knows that we may not know okay so the purpose should be to please krishna here also in return i they should do good to me who is the focus here me or krishna who is the focus you are doing swayam bhakti instead of krishna bhakti so the purpose of this discussion is to do krishna bhakti not swayam bhakti remove yourself from the center of the universe okay another question is how to console yourself when you don't get good behavior in action you don't yeah while others who are same answer. same answer you don't need to console the point is this should not even be a consideration consoling and all that comes when you are being affected so as a starting practice you may need to console yourself yes you will be affected even i after 15 years of reading bhagavad gita i also very much get affected i am a very slow learner so we are all slow learners but try and one very very important advice that i give to people is you practice take some verse which you really liked today take that verse and memorize it and at different times of the day revise it put it as a take a print out and put it in your bedroom where you can see it as soon as you open your eyes put it on the ceiling take paste the print out on the ceiling so that when you open your eyes instead of looking at your whatsapp or phone you look at that verse say today i will do my best to apply that verse the night when you are about to sleep look at it today where did i fail in applying it in the middle of the day three times remember that verse make it the wallpaper of your phone this is active practice so when somebody does something to you you don't have to wait till friday to remind yourself oh bhagavad gita oh i could have applied it oh this or when you are hearing bhagavad gita you will not remember those instances when somebody did something bad or good you have to apply it in that moment so pick and it is not possible to remember all 700 together and apply it together pick verse by verse verse by verse use it for one month one verse one month and apply it remember did i apply this verse what happened in the last 6 hours where i did not apply and i could have applied like this you will actually practice this is bhagavad gita is supposed to be lord krishna says so many times the word abhyas what it means abhyas means practice if you don't apply it you can keep asking all these questions over and over and over again and uh, it will all seem like uh, oh this is all too good to be true oh it's useless doesn't work are baba if you have not seriously applied it obviously it will not work and just by trying one time if you just say oh this is useless if a child who is learning to walk first time he falls and says oh no point in walking would any, none of you would be walking today okay you have to fall many times and take shelter of bhagavad gita regularly read bhagavad gita regular reading means like that pasting it 
I'm not saying all 700 verses regular reading every day. No, one verse, but serious reading of that one verse every day. Really do this in your life. And then you will see how much quick progress you make in your spiritual life. Literally apply it. We spend so much time in applying so many things in our life. You learn Java, you learn C, you write small, small programs. So many times you write, then you are able to write efficient code. You can't write efficient code the first time you learned for loop. You'll write the most inefficient code, isn't it? That is why experience is valued. They say how much experience you have, not how many languages you know. You know one language, but if you're an expert, you will be paid higher than if you know 20 languages, jack of all, master of none. So you can be jack of all 700 verses, master of none. Better to be master of one verse. All right. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupad ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna.